What's up you guys? So I've been doing some digging and I got some real tea for you. Matthew Knowles in an interview recently with Vlad TV made the statement that members of Jagged Edge, the R&B group Jagged Edge, who went on tour with Destiny's Child in 1988, he made the statement that they harassed Beyonce and Kelly. And people put two and two together that because two members of Jagged Edge, the twins, dated Latoya and Latavia, the two members of Destiny's Child that were eventually forced out of the group, people put two and two together and some are blaming Jagged Edge for breaking up Destiny's Child. And by Matthew Knowles saying that members of Jagged Edge harassed Beyonce and Kelly, he basically added fuel to that fire, fuel to that rumor. But we're gonna get down to the truth of it which I discovered in his book and in interviews with both Jagged Edge and members of Destiny's Child. And from what it looks like, Matthew Knowles wasn't so concerned about Beyonce and Kelly allegedly being harassed. He was more concerned about gaining guardianship of Latoya and Latavia, just like he had guardianship of Kelly Rowland. And Latoya and Latavia's mothers weren't interested in giving up guardianship of their children. And it appears members of Jagged Edge we're on the side of Latoya and Latavia's mother. And that's what the real issue was. We started getting feedback that two of the girls of Destiny Child was being entertained by a couple of members of Jagged Edge to the point that the influence was felt, at least from Destiny Child's management, to be bigger than they wanted. While on tour together, it all came to a head. We were, we were somewhere in Louisiana, and Latoya's mother, Miss Pam, we called her, was gonna ride on the bus with us. And our management was like, if Pam gets on that bus, then y'all are gonna lose your job. We were like, hell no, like, you're not gonna kick somebody's mother off a bus, like, you know what I'm saying, like, no. Jagged Edge stood up for Miss Pam because it's wrong. You can't just leave this girl's mother. We were asked to leave. <laughs> We got kicked off the bus. He ended up kicking us off and the mom. We were real people and he didn't like that. And I think it was as simple as that. It was a big thing. And then of course, you know, not long thereafter, there were new members being introduced to Destiny's Child. All right, so in the Vlad interview, Matthew Knowles does say that he goes into more detail about the situation on the bus in his book. So I did purchase his book and this is what he says in his book. He says that he was managing a group called Jagged Edge and there was an opportunity for the girls to go on tour with John B, who he was also managing. And he says, it's hard to believe that Destiny's Child was the opening act for John B, but they were because they had to grow. So one of the challenges was, here you have some 16, 17 year old ladies, young ladies on the tour bus with some 22, 23 year old grown men. That was a big mistake on my part. I put them on the same tour bus because I managed both of them and it would have saved both groups a significant amount of money not to have them on two buses rather than one. So basically he was trying to save money and I'm sure the money he saved went into his pocket based on allegations that members of Destiny's Child made about him. He goes on to say, there would be times when they would stop and stay in hotels. One of the chaperones at that time, because the chaperones kind of switched out, wasn't the strongest of chaperones. I got a call one day from Kelly and Beyonce and it was basically, quote, we're really tired of this harassment by Jagged Edge. They were sick and tired of being harassed by two of the members of the boys group. He says, that's when I had to make a decision in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now that's the city that they just named in the, in the interview, Baton Rouge. I told these young men not to be on the bus anymore. And that's where the situation culminated into the split between the group that was already slowly brewing. Now, let me point out one thing right here. I've been doing statement analysis, which is like a branch of body language analysis and determining deception. And it's interesting that in his statement, he never mentions Latoya's mother being present. In their interview, they say the fact that Latoya's mother was present was a big issue. And that was the issue on whether or not they got on the bus, whether or not the mother was allowed on the bus. But the fact that he completely leaves out the fact that Latoya's mother was present is a sign of deception. It is, it's a sign of deception. It's a way of telling half the truth. And telling half the truth is basically lying. Half truths 
are lies. And I believe the reason he's lying is because he doesn't want to go into the issues that he had with the parents of the other Destiny's Child members, Latoya Luck's mother and Latavia Robertson's mother. According to the lawsuit that Latoya and Latavia filed in 2000, Matthew Knowles wanted guardianship over them just like he had guardianship over Kelly Rowland. In the news from that time, Rolling Stone reported, Ex-Destiny Child members Latoya Luckett and Latavia Roberson have settled their lawsuit against original group members Beyonce Knowles, Kelly Rowland, and their manager Knowles' father Matthew, and the group's label Sony Music. The lawsuit charged all parties with breach of contract, defamation, libel, and fraud. Terms of the settlement, which was reached on July 24th, were not disclosed. Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson were original members of the group, but quit two years ago after complaints about Matthew Knowles' management. The suit alleges that Mr. Knowles attempted to gain legal guardianship of Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson. It also says he refused to share financial information with them and their parents and unlawfully replaced them in the group without informing them. So clearly and allegedly Matthew Knowles had an issue with the parents in the group because he wasn't able to have complete control over the group if the parents were still present and that's why he wanted guardianship. Another report says in 1996 Matthew Knowles asked the parents of the other three girls if he could become their guardian. The mothers of Latavia and Latoya refused, but Kelly's mother, who ran out on her drunk abusive husband when Kelly was just three, agreed. In his book, Matthew Knowles does go into more detail about how he eventually got guardianship over Kelly Rowland. Now, Kelly Rowland is sometimes presented as Beyonce's cousin, but nowhere in the book does he say that she's Beyonce's cousin. In his book, he says, when the next set of changes occurred, family and group wise, it was with the discovery of Calendria Kelly Rowland, who joined the group as a backup singer. Kelly was a compelling talent, yet bashful and very unsure of herself. She had a beautiful voice, could sing, would constantly stay on key, and her tone was always on the money. She and Beyonce hit it off almost immediately. They became best of friends and are still to this day. While their connection as friends was developing and just as the group began establishing a bond, a change in Kelly's life would transpire. Her mom, Doris, worked as a nanny for an affluent white couple, both of whom were doctors. She and Kelly had living quarters at that couple's house. One day, Doris's boss came to her with no advance warning and told her that changes were being made and that she and Kelly would need to find somewhere else to live within 30 days. Doris wanted to go back to Atlanta, which was her hometown, but she wanted to have her act together so that she could properly take care of Kelly. She saw the potential that Kelly had with her being a part of the girls group and the closeness that Kelly had, not only with Beyonce, but with our entire family. Tina and I sat down with Doris and the three of us decided that Kelly would stay with us for 30 to 60 days while Doris got things together in Atlanta. Then Kelly would eventually move with her. As time went by, it became obvious that Doris soon realized that her daughter was very committed to the group and that we loved her and would treat her right. That's exactly what we did. We treated her as if she were our own child and constantly made sure that she knew she was loved. She had living arrangements that she never had before, from staying in an affluent black neighborhood in Houston to her own sisterhood of experiencing constant fun and simply being able to enjoy being a child. She ended up staying with Tina and me for over 12 years. And he goes on to say, as Kelly got older, she started dating. And as she lived longer with us, she gained more confidence. Tina and I never looked at Kelly and saw any differences between her, Solange, and Beyonce. We never said, well, what we do is going to be different with Kelly than with our own kids. It was never that. We never even thought of it that way. We were a family and she became part of it. She called me dad and she called Tina mom or Miss Tina. So that's how he was able to get guardianship over Kelly. Basically, her mother was between a rock and a hard place and he stepped in. Now, in his book, he also talks about Latoya and her mother and how Latoya came into the group. He says Latoya had a bubbly personality, good voice and good energy. After auditioning maybe 15 girls, the decision was made to bring her in. When you bring in any kid, you also bring in their parents. 
that always becomes a challenge with any kid group. You not only sign the child, but you sign the adults, not on paper, but fundamentally. And throughout the book, he continues to mention the parents as if they are an issue. And he talks about how record labels would turn down the girls and the group because of their parents. And he talks about how one record label told his co-manager, quote, look, one of the reasons we don't want to sign these girls is you have three girls and you have four dancers. That's seven people. Then you've got parents, which is another 10 people. That's 17 people we got to deal with. We don't want to deal with that. And there's a part in the book that's written by another manager that worked with Destiny's Child. And she says, the girls were great. They had grown and matured in the past two years to become even better performers than when I had first seen them in Atlanta. I was even more excited because they were developing into true stage performers. They still had great chemistry together. The songs were very cool. I remember saying to Randy Jackson, Randy, we got to get these girls. And he was more like, yeah, but the parents are involved. He had just had a situation where he had a girl group and it had a lot of parents involved and things didn't go well. So you can see where he's painting the picture that parents have been an issue in the group. In another chapter, he says, so I was disappointed by all these series of near misses, but I kept at it for quite some time. For example, one of the relationships I had at the time was with Sylvia Roan when she was at Electra. Sylvia told me, you know, this is really good and I think the girls are good, but you've got six girls plus 12 parents. Most of the parents are divorced, which means for us to take a record deal with your girls, we have to deal with 12 attorneys. Well, I didn't think they're all divorced, I tried to argue, but she said, well, it's a very complicated deal and we got to have contracts ready and ratified by the court for all girls under 21. It's just too hard. There's too much money involved. We pass. So the solution to the problem he was having, if you put two and two together, is to become guardianship of all of the members of the group. And that's what he tried to do in 1996. He tried to become guardian of all of the members of the group. And he was only able to become a guardian of Kelly. Latoya and Latavia's mother declined. And that seems to be one of the foundational issues in the breakup of Destiny's Child. The fact that he was not able to get guardianship over Latoya and Latavia. And the issue that happened when they went on tour with Jagged Edge seems to be not so much that two members were harassing Kelly and Beyonce. It seems to be that the members of Jagged Edge sided with the parents. They sided with Latoya's mom and they had a blow up in Baton Rouge when Matthew Knowles wouldn't allow Latoya's mother to ride on the bus with them. We started getting feedback that two of the girls of Destiny Child was being entertained by a couple of members of Jagged Edge to the point that the influence was felt, at least from Destiny Child's management, to be bigger than he wanted. While on tour together, it all came to a head. We were, we were somewhere in Louisiana, and Latoya's mother, Miss Pam, we called her, was gonna ride on the bus with us. And our management was like, if Pam gets on that bus, then y'all are gonna lose your job. We were like, hell no, like, you're not gonna kick somebody's mother off a bus, like, you know what I'm saying, like, no. Jagged Edge stood up for Miss Pam because it's wrong. You can't just leave this girl's mother. We were asked to leave. <laughs> we got kicked off the bus. He ended up kicking us off and the mom. We were real people and he didn't like that. And I think it was as simple as that. It was a big thing. And then of course, you know, not long thereafter, there were new members being introduced to Destiny's Child. So from everything I've read, it seems the issue was that Matthew Knowles wanted complete control. He wanted guardianship over each member of Destiny's Child. And two of the members, Latoya and Latavia's mother, weren't giving up guardianship. And Jagged Edge supported their girlfriend's mothers. That's what it looks like to me. But leave a comment and let me know what you think about this whole mess of an old school situation. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching.